Hey guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked. And as promised, we're going to do a review of the um, Canon T2i 550D. Uh, not really a review, I guess I should say, uh, really a walkthrough on the functions and buttons and how everything works. So for part one, I kind of have a list of things that I'm going to talk about. Um, so the first part of uh, part one, we're going to go over how to put your battery in your lenses and uh, where you put your SD card, which most of you already know this, but I decided to just go on and kind of explain it to you. Uh, next, I'm going to show you how to, how to set your ISO, your shutter speed, your aperture, and your white balance. Uh, on top of doing the white balance, I'm also going to show you how to do a custom white balance so that you really get the true color of the situation that you're in. As well, uh, I'm going to go over your AF points and that's as far as your focusing points and stuff. Um, so when you're shooting, if you want to just focus on just maybe just my, my face, instead of trying to get my whole body in focus, you can set you know one little tiny point so that when that point's on my face, it would just focus in on that. Uh, next, for the like, third part, we're going to go over all the manual settings of the T2i, and in the uh, the last part, we're going to go over all of your auto settings and what they do. And then, uh, very last, is video mode. And I've already done a kind of a walkthrough on the video mode. So I'm going to add a link to that when we get down to video mode. And, uh, and if you click on the link, then you'll be able to watch, the, uh, watch my tutorial on the video mode. So uh, let's get started. The first thing um, that we're going to go over is pretty much... The, where the battery goes, which is pretty simple. Um, the battery goes right here, as you can see, and uh, you just pull it out and pops right in. So most of you, have, I'm hoping, have figured that much out. Uh, then you got your SD card. It pops in and out right here. And then last but not least is how do you put your lens on your camera? Um, this is button right here, and you just pull over and out. And if you see, it's got dots, and the dots match up uh, red and white. If it's red dot, that means it's a full frame lens. If it's a white dot, that means it is a crop sensored lens, just to let you know. And uh, that's how you pretty much put your lens on, put your battery in, put your SD card in. Um, so next, we're going to talk about uh, how to do your ISO, your shutter speed, uh, white balance, and aperture. First off, we'll talk about uh, how to do your ISO. So we're going to turn the uh, the camera on and as you can see I'm going to put it in manual settings. Alright so to do your ISO you mean you merely click this button and as you can see you have the options and this is how you scroll through your ISO right here with your dial and I can pick my different ISOs. So or you can set it to auto depending on what you want to do. Alright and then you just hit this once and it will take you right out of ISO. Or you can just hit the ISO button a second time, as you can see, hitting it twice, boom. All right, so a lot of people want to know how to do aperture and stuff, which is uh, a little tricky. So say I want to set the aperture of this. You're going to hold down this button while, so push this down and scroll right here. And if you notice where it says 3.5, now I'm changing my aperture. So just hold that button down and your aperture shall get changed. Um, next would be... Uh, your shutter speed and that's just this just this dial right here so as you see this is this is shutter speed by the way this is shutter speed aperture and ISO right here and then this is your metering um, which we'll go over in another tutorial one day uh, so as I'm scrolling through my shutter speeds you know you want to put it around 250 a little bit maybe 3 320 or so when it comes to sports photography um, if you're doing more still photography you need more light drop it down a little bit if the person's stiller um, so uh, that's how you do those now white balance is right here and as you can see you have a couple different options as far as white balance is concerned um, and let me see if I can get it focused here um, so you can put it in auto which a lot of people keep in auto uh, daylight shade uh, cloudy and you've got all these different functions you know if you're using a flash or whatever so those are how you do aperture shutter speed and white balance and ISO now what I'm going to show you how to do is do a a manual ISO or a white balance my bad so say you just want to set the white balance for how it is you don't like the way the lighting is looking um, so you want to do it manually so what we're going to do is we're going to take a white piece of paper like this um, make sure, if you notice on the side of your camera, 
Um, some people have this, this is your image stabilizer. Make sure that's usually always on. And then this AF stands for autofocus, this stands for manual focus. So let's go on and put it in manual focus because it's not gonna focus in properly on a white piece of paper. So um, we could actually just go to manual if we just wanna set it to manual. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to take a picture of this and it's a completely blank screen as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on menu and I'm gonna go over to, actually we gotta, we gotta go back to manual now. I just use automatic just cause it was the fastest way to get the shot. Uh, we're gonna go to your second red button and if you notice where it says custom white balance, click set and then you're gonna click set again and it's gonna take that color, this color from the shot and that's gonna be your white balance. So, okay, and now that is set, and now I've customly set my white balance. So that is how you do a custom white balance for people out there that don't like the white, the automatic or the other white balance settings. You can customly do it that way. Okay, next are your focusing points. So, uh, if you notice you have this right here, you're gonna hit this. These are your focusing points. Now right now I have them all lined, but say I'm doing a shot and I really just want to use one, like my center focusing point. What I'll do is, sorry, a little confusing. Uh, that is my center one. And you can see I can pick specific. So you have uh, nine focusing points on this. And, uh, and then if you just want to focus just the general picture, that's how you focus that. So now what we're gonna go over is your dials right here. And I'm gonna kind of explain to you what each function of the dial does. So let's go through these manual settings. Now all of your manual settings start at, uh, at P and work your way all the way up to A depth. Um, all right, here's your on and off button by the way. And if you see this says ISO, so this is your ISO button. And then this is, is up here is your dial that you use quite frequently when you're shooting. Um, so as we got it, we got it set to auto depth. Now what auto depth is, mainly what you have control of is the ISO. The camera controls your shutter and your aperture for you and it's trying to give you um, like a depth, a depth of field when you're shooting. So it tries to meter that for you and preset that. So if you're going for some kind of uh, auto depth of field, um, then this kind of the camera's trying to help you out with that. Next is manual. Now manual is pretty much the only place I keep my, um, my dial at. I do the simple fact that manual gives me full control of the camera. I can set my ISO, I can set my aperture, I can set my, set my shutter speed, uh, which is great for me and for the type of photography where, where I'm doing a lot of candid or portrait, you know, stuff where I, I can at least take a little bit of time, set it up. You know, if I'm going out for a candid shoot, I'll kind of get the lighting um, in, the, in, the, in the building or outside where I'm at before I start shooting. But sometimes you don't really have that and you're gonna need other settings to do so. But manual gives you full functionality, so you're able to use that. You're able to use your white balance, your ISO, your shutter speed, your aperture, all that stuff I just explained to you. You can use all that in manual. Now next is AV, and that stands for aperture priority. And pretty much uh, whatever you set your shutter at is gonna take your aperture and try to match it with it. So if you're worried about setting your shutter at, let's say you wanna set your shutter for like a sports game, and you set your shutter at 250, but you don't exactly know what aperture you need to be at. Well, this will actually go in and try to manually or automatically set up that aperture um, for you so you don't have to sit there and mess with it, which is great for like sports and stuff. You know, you know you need to keep your sports, you know, this is a fairly fast moving uh, soccer game, football game, and you know you need your shutter at 320. So then it's gonna set your aperture to try to match that with the lighting that it gets. Um, and of course, you still have control of your ISO. Uh, next is the TV button and that is your shutter priority and you um, you pretty much have control of your shutter but camera will automatically control your aperture on this one so again it's uh, it's you have full control of your shutter but the camera is going to control your aperture um, and that's pretty pretty close to what aperture priority is a little bit different um, Next would be program, A-E-P. And what it does is uh, you control the ISO, the camera controls your aperture and shutter. So most of these, most of these settings, the camera is gonna control your aperture and your shutter. The difference is, is that each setting is for like different situations, you know. Uh, 
uh, app properties for like sports or say you're trying to catch like a waterfall and you want that uh, you don't want to catch that rugged fall you kind of want that smooth look to it you know so you're gonna set your shutter uh, you know really low so it's real smooth and it's not very you know it's you got that kind of that that movement but it doesn't look that bad it's gonna reset your aperture for that um, and then like your auto depth of field it's gonna set your it's gonna help you set up for you know a depth of field shot so um, so that is that's that's pretty much what your manual settings are. And if you guys have any more questions, leave me a message, and I will try to answer them uh, the best I can. All right. So next is going to be ma automatic, and pretty much automatic sets everything for you. Now, uh, one thing I do like about automatic, and I do use a lot on a shoot, um, is that if you noticed on your T2i, you kind of have you can kind of push the button down about halfway, and then there's you can push it all the way down, and that clicks. Um, so what I use uh, automatic for is if I don't have a lighting a light meter, I don't use one. I actually use automatic as my light meter. So I'll put put my camera on my subject or whatever I'm going for. I'll half click it. I'll cut, pull away to to you know my screen up here, and I'll look at the settings that the automatic gave me, and then I will remember those settings, put it in manual, put it in those same settings, and then tweak it a little bit. Um, it seems to work really good for me, and I really highly suggest doing that. Um, it's pretty much what I, what I call just my own personal light meter built within the camera. So your automatic settings, you can just do what's called a half click, not a full click, or even if you do a full click, you can go back, look at the settings that the camera automatically figured, you know, said that you wanted, and you can even look at the picture and go, okay, uh, well, it looks like the camera shutter speed was a little off, so I'm going to up my shutter speed, or the aperture, you know, is a little dark, so I want to draw my aperture a little bit to have a little more light. So that's really nice. Uh, next is, is, this is pretty much the same thing as automatic, except it's not going to have your flash pop up, which, by the way, uh, if you notice, you have a button right here. And what this button does, if you put it, say we put it in manual, let's go on and turn the camera on. Um, so we're going to go on and push that button. And let me just pull out just a little bit. And when you push that button, it's going to pop up your flash. So, um, which is a great, the flash is great um, if you're just doing just basic um, photography, but you really want to go with an external flash like the 430EX, the 430EX2. That's, probably, that's my favorite flash. Um, a lot of people like the 580s. So, uh, but pretty much what this setting does right here is it just gives you automatic, uh, pretty much the same thing as the green one, automatic, except that it's non-flash. Uh, this one is your portrait. So if you're doing portrait shots like a model or something like that, a family portrait, this is going to try to give you the best settings for a portrait setting. Uh, next is landscape. So you're out, you're hiking, uh, you got a farm, or you just like taking pictures of nature. This is going to give you the best automatic settings for a nature landscape type shot. Um, next is close-ups. So if you're doing like a close-up on someone, this is going to give you the best, you know, the best automatic quality that the camera thinks that you need for a close-up shot. Uh, next one is sports. Again, if you're doing sports, you don't want to mess with all the automatic, you know, the manual settings. Uh, pop it, pop it in this running guy uh, mode and start snapping away. It will give you the best settings for sports. Uh, last is night portraits. Which I, I never really tell you the truth. I probably should use some of these automatic settings, but I really never have uh, at all. The only two automatic settings that I've ever really used are the green one and then the one right underneath the green one, which are both are automatics. And very rarely do I even use those. The only time I really use those is for a light meter. Um, so a night portrait, you know, I haven't used many of these, but these, what the camera really does is just going to try to give you the best shot that's possible for those, for what it sensors, you know, the sensor through the lens. And last but not least is your video mode. Again, if you guys want to know a little bit more about video mode, how to manually set set up your video mode and control your video mode a little bit, um, please go to the link up in the right corner, and uh, and that will kind of break it down. And, and when I get some time, I'll go through and I'll really break um, the video mode down. So, uh, so those are how those are all your buttons. So this is this is to conclude my. Um, Part one. Uh, next time we'll go over. Uh, next time we will go over what all these different buttons do and this, and then we'll kind of get into. Hopefully, if we have time next time, we'll get into all these menu settings and what they mean and what you can do with them. 
because there is it does get a little confusing. You have different menu settings for video and different menu settings for uh, your manual settings. So uh, I hope this helped you out. Please leave a message or comment if you have any questions or you didn't understand something. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And, um, and again, check us out at Twitter, David D. Images. Uh, as well, I have a Skype, which is David D. Images. If you ever just want to try to connect with me, I do try to stay on Skype a couple hours a day, if not more. And uh, and I'd be more than happy to Skype with you. Um, there's quite a few people that have Skyped me, and I've actually become really cool with uh, quite a few of them. And I've you know I've done what I could to help them out with uh, their careers. So, anyways, thank you guys very much. I'll see you next time for part two.